Hey everybody, Fishman here. This is uh, one of the long-term projects that I've been working on in the last little while. This uh, project I started about, uh, well, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, and will definitely run probably for the better part of this year. I uh, have to test out everything that I might try for a client's tank, and I thought maybe I was seen a lot of people who have done, uh, well, Chato reactors, algae scrubbers, uh, that sort of thing. So I thought what I'd do is uh, try one out. I have a client that, uh, well, it's, uh, it's a low-budget aquarium. They can't really afford anything. And so they can't really afford, like, top-of-the-line stuff. So what I want to do is uh, build this for them. And I'm going to use uh, their system as a test to see if, um, <laughs> see if this is going to have any noticeable effect, really. Uh, algae scrubbers, uh, or refugiums, uh, chato reactors, all that sort of stuff, pretty much just use uh, some sort of uh, plant matter to remove uh, nitrates, phosphates, and that sort of stuff from fish tanks. Now, in principle, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But in uh, actual function, uh, there's a number of things they have to take into account. Uh, for a maintenance thing like what I do, uh, first off, it has to have a noticeable effect. I mean, uh, I mean like, an effect that um, makes it worthwhile building and putting one of these on. And also, it has to be something that will fit, uh, given whatever sort of circumstances these uh, the client has. Not everyone has a large uh, underneath section or another room or whatever where they can have a large filtration system. So in this particular case, uh, they have none of that. So this has to kind of sort of fit on top of the tank, and so it has to be small. And then again, if it's small, is it going to be um, have enough biological activity to actually make a difference in the aquarium? Uh, I'm going to test this out uh, at my place for a while, uh, make sure it works. Because first off, it has to flow properly for at least a couple of weeks uh, without any maintenance or having to look at it whatsoever. Because uh, in any uh, given uh, maintenance situation you may not see the tank like if it's a home tank you can see it every day and make sure everything works right but in this case it may not you may not even look at it for uh, two weeks and then it may have to be another two weeks before you see it again so it has to be reliable in that way so that part I'm going to test out uh, in the shop make sure everything works well and then uh, because the tank I'm going to be setting this up on really doesn't need a chato reactor or algae scrubber or whatever because it runs very low uh, nutrients anyway. So once I'm sure it's functional, then I'm going to shift it over to the client's tank, and then I'm going to run it for the rest of the year there, and uh, see if it actually makes a noticeable difference in the amount of maintenance I have to do, and so on and so forth. So there you go, long-winded introduction to this. Uh, while I was talking, I'm just building the acrylic insert. This is the box where all the water is going to flow through, and where I'm going to put the Chato, or well, Chato initially anyway, and then I'm going to build an aluminum surround for it. Because this is going to sit on top of a tank, uh, there's an air gap there, I'm just pointing that out. Because this is going to sit on top of a tank, um, it has to not be giving off a lot of light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an aluminum box for this, and then I'm going to put the attach the lights that I'm going to be using inside that, and then. Well, here we go. I'm going to start it off here. This is 05 aluminum. <laughs> I haven't been showing you guys a lot of me cutting stuff on saws lately because, well, it, it's re repetitive. And, and you can obviously tell by this shot that I've uh, lost, my <laughs> lost my ability to film without getting in the way. So this is uh, very easy to cut on a, on a table saw. Um, actually, a band saw, pretty much anything for that matter. It's, uh, it's very easy. I'm cutting it on this because I want to uh, get a nice straight edge. And then what we're going to do here is use angle aluminum. I didn't bother showing you cutting that. That's uh, pretty much the same. And like this, we're going to make a box. And the reason why I'm using aluminum, uh, first off, uh, it doesn't corrode with uh, salt, which is great. And also I want to be able to dissipate. Because the lights are going to be inside a, co a contained system, I want to make sure there's a good heat dissipation because I don't want to end up uh, well, cooking the algae or the chato. Uh, so it needs to uh, keep as cool and uh, even flow as possible. So what I'm doing here is same as uh, with the other builds. 
I am just sanding the edges. Once you sand aluminum uh, and you use silicone to glue it together, you cannot pull that apart by hand. You can obviously get it apart by tools and stuff, but it's a very strong bond. And what I want to do is, like I said, I just want to build uh, a nice little box for this. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as this <laughs> as this continues, there's something else I want to talk about. Uh, once from what? Ah, excuse me. Uh, when I first started doing the uh, thousand subscriber uh, giveaway, I had to go back and check, uh, every, you know, periodically to see uh, who had subscribed and who had written comments and that sort of stuff to uh, keep make sure everyone was in the contest. I noticed at that time that the the notifications I get for people who leave in comments doesn't always show up. I thought that was kind of strange. <laughs> but then I've noticed that actually a lot of people have also uh, uh, made comments about this over the, you know, since I've, like all the other YouTube videos that I watch. And it was like, okay, how pervasive is this? And so I, I kept an eye on it. And as I was making this, uh, putting this video together, I was just checking through some of the older videos I've made. And I realized that... Uh, there's comments that go by that I don't get notifications for, and I therefore haven't responded to it. And I really like responding to everything. So if you've made a comment and I have not responded to it, uh, my apologies. Um, it's because I didn't get the notification. Uh, I do periodically go through and check the videos, but <laughs> it's getting to the point where you have enough videos. It's just it's <laughs> it's a job in itself just to go through and uh, check all the backlog. So anyway, like I said, uh, my apologies if you've made a comment and you have not gotten a response. Uh, please just let me know, like make another comment or whatever, and let me know that there was one that I missed, especially if there's something you wanted an answer to, and I'll do my best to get to that. So here we are. Uh, we're getting to the point where we're going to add LEDs. Now what I need to do is, uh, in, all, like, in all the other builds I've done for uh, any of the uh, LED canopies and that sort of stuff, uh, you don't need to put this little strip of uh, electrical tape down. It's just the habit. This is what I've been doing, uh, well, since I started doing this. I don't think it's possible to get this to short out. And, and as far as safety is concerned, um, LEDs, these LEDs here, run off a 12-volt uh, ballast. So uh, there is no electrical hazard danger or anything. It's just, it's just there um, to make sure that... Uh, I don't want to have to replace any of these things, so I want it to last as long as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run three strips on each side, and then I'm going to solder them all up. And what I'm going to do is, uh, this is not actually very, uh, well, it's not a lot of uh, wattage, but uh, the only ballast I have currently, or sorry, power supply I have currently is a 90 watt one, uh, so it's going to be running off of that. Uh, the uh, power supply isn't even going to warm up trying to run these little things, so... You can run this at a, a much lower uh, a power a source, but like I said, I'm just testing this out. And I don't want to go buying a ballast for it, a new power supply for it, and also um, the client can't really afford one anyway, so I'm just using what I have on hand. So what we're going to do is just going to very easily uh, just uh, solder the wires on, just to interconnect them. And as I said before, you don't need to do them on the ends like this. I just find the little pads on the ends are a little easier to work with than the, somewhere in the middle. But you, because it's a direct current, you can uh, solder at any point you want and connect any two pads to, well, any two positive pads together or any two negative pads together. And as before, I will silicone any of the uh, solder joints uh, simply because, well, salt's a pain. So uh, I started making this video and I uh, had originally put it all together in one go and it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting to be over 20 minutes long, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half. Uh, I'm going to just show you up to getting the, these solder joints done, and also going to uh, pressure test the uh, acrylic insert. And then I'm going to call it there, and then uh, next week what I'll do is I will finish that up, and I'll show you how it all worked as far as uh, its algae scrubbing capabilities go, and also show you what it looks like as a, a full unit. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you like this style of video. Uh, sorry for cutting it in half, but I don't. I'm trying not to make videos that are uh, too long because uh, not everyone has time to watch these sorts of things. So, 
Uh, again, next week I will uh, finish this up, and I also give you an update on how it's been doing uh, sitting on the client's tank. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the, the next video. Oh, these are just the uh, end caps. That's where the um, these two pipes that you see on either end are going to slide down through because I want to be able to lift this up with ease so that uh, I don't have to take everything apart and spend you know half an hour cleaning this thing, which would be very counterproductive. <laughs> anyway, thanks again.